Cheers! Prost! <laughs> Pinky up, nice strategy, nice technique. <laughs> Welcome back to A Red Wine Talks. Um, wow, I've done so many of these. And you have been on my list to do this with for quite a while now. Really? You wanna know why? Why? Because she's a philosophy student. Uh, well, you just graduated. Yeah, yesterday. In on philosophy. YouTube. On you. On Great, YouTube. wow. <laughs> How did that feel? Um, it felt unofficial. Like Honestly. anticlimactic? Well, first of all, the head of the school said my name wrong, um, which was an insult to me, of course. I didn't even but... say your name. Oh my god. Anna. <laughs> okay. I'm saying it, sorry, I'm, this is Anna. I'm trying to say it with the German accent because you that was were... like Finnish. Yeah. But isn't your mom Dutch? She's German and my dad is Danish. Danish. Yeah. Damn, it's close. I had all those notes written, but I get the whole thing wrong. Okay. Things to remember right now in the first two seconds. Anna, sorry. Anna. 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 Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Um, graduated with a philosophy degree, which I think is cool because if I were to go back to school, philosophy would be my degree. So I, we, that, that's gonna take up like half the video, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> You're from New York. Yes. Like native New Yorker in the house, mm -hmm. which is freaking cool. Except I'm actually originally from Germany. So because I moved to New York with my family when I was eight, I kind of feel like I'm in between. I feel like people might um, understand what I'm talking about about like um, living half in one place and half in another while growing up and then never really feeling like you're fully mm -hmm. that nationality or that one. And so it's kind of like wherever you are, you're always the outsider. You know? Yes. Yeah. yeah, and I always feel like people who grew up that way, they almost talk about it as if it's, well, it's a struggle, it's in some sense, but in my eyes, I always thought that was so cool. Like I would love, like I wish everybody who grew up like that would remember that there's a cool side to that too, where you ha you're growing up in two cultures. Yeah. I grew up in one. I would love to have another culture that I could call home in some sense. Yeah. But are you saying like it's because you never feel truly home in well, one? Well, it's it's not that deep for me. I just <laughs> <laughs> despite being a philosopher, student, that one's not that deep. No, it's just when I was when I was a kid, when I had just moved, it was amazing. I was so excited. But then when I came back the first summer, summer, um, everybody was like, "Who even are you now?" So when I was mm. like nine, it was. It was like, where do I belong? But now it's now it's like, yeah, I'm from two places, and that's Jeez. that's cool. I definitely, I think it's freaking cool. What made you? What got you into philosophy in the first place? For me, it was The Matrix. You go. Really? Yes. Okay. Good, good stepping stone. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, this is this ties to like my whole college journey. Um and like where I first ended up, which is Minnesota, <coughs> of all places. <laughs> um, and basically I just, I didn't want to go to an Ivy League like my older sister had done. Um, I knew it made my parents very, very proud, but I, I just didn't want to do something specifically for anybody else's expectations. So I was like, okay, anywhere but here. So I chose Minnesota because Basically, since you know my dad is Danish, and I never really got into, into contact with my Danish heritage, I I was like, okay, where's the next best stop? Mm -hmm. It's Minnesota. <laughs> I, there's I bet. The, yeah, there's like the biggest Danish population there, or like settlement. There, so I was like, okay, I will I will connect to my roots there. Interesting. And, and I and not Denmark. Okay. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to. Okay, that was that was sassy, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I don't know how to sit in a chair. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay, but no, I just I really I would have loved to study in Denmark, but I didn't find any um, English speaking programs that really interested me. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I was I guess I was scared, but I maybe should have done it. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to study at, at an American college. Got um, it. And yeah, so I was like, okay, Denmark, no, doesn't work. Minnesota, maybe. And so I, I tried that out, and um, actually at that college, St. Olaf College. They have the biggest Sol and Kierkegaard collection outside of Denmark, and one of my first classes there was a philosophy class with um, Gordon Marino. He was such a blessing. The one and only. The one and only. He was such a blessing. <laughs> um, that's her little inside joke, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I told her sometimes this is difficult because I'm actually friends with these people. Like I'm friends. 
these people and we have all these things that actually happen and I'm like, but let's try to steer away from the inside jokes because they're not going to get it and they're yeah. just watching two people talk that has nothing to do with them. Yeah. yeah. But we don't, he doesn't know. Of course, I actually don't know. That was like a fake inside joke. Yeah. But. It was a fake inside joke. But anyway, he, um, oh my god, gotta hurry up. But he basically, he was just a mentor to me and he um, taught this class on Camus and Kekuga and um, I just immediately fell in love. With Camus or? With basically Kekuga was first and then. These are philosophers. Yeah, these are philosophers. And it, although I was in a bookstore yesterday and I was looking through the philosophy section, didn't find Camus because I was gonna try to find you one. I was gonna try to find you the myth of Sisyphus. Couldn't find That's it. That's on the list right now. Oh my god, of course. The myth of Sisyphus is on the list. Yeah. I always feel like I'm saying syphilis. Oh my god, totally. And it's right? so embarrassing to like mispronounce it the in the Freudian, Freudal, Freudal slip. slip. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Freudal. Freudian. There's also a club in Germany called Sisyphos. That's how they say it, I guess, but it's literally Sisyphos. In Berlin? In Berlin. Okay. You don't know Sisyphos? I don't. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I like, <laughs> I didn't grow up in Berlin. I grew up in the tiniest little town. No, nowhere. Yeah. So you take what, like an intro to philosophy class and then you're just like, whoa, this is so interesting? Yeah, and it was an intro to existentialism class. Boom. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, I'm sold. And then I was like, that this will be my major. And I also took like chemistry because my sister was like, just get it out right from just the bat. Yeah. And I was like, I dropped, I dropped that class. I got a, a, a W for withdrawal. Um, and it turned out I didn't even need it. So that was, thanks. Thanks, sis. But um, <laughs> thanks for making me do that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, after that, like, I was just hooked, and I, I just wrote my thesis on Kekuga. So, thanks, Gordon Marino. Gordon Marino. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. He's in the comments, like, I love you. <laughs> okay, wait. For those who don't, so sweet. Uh, okay. <laughs> we'll we'll like send this to him. Yeah. <laughs> this like very official this red wine talk. This is my ode to Gordon Marino. <laughs> Um, for those who don't know what existentialism is, trust me, I didn't know what this was until like last year. Actually, let's quiz me right now. Okay. Existentialism. <laughs> like okay. shit, what is this again? Okay, I'll ask you. Okay. Okay. What is the difference... <laughs> what is the difference between existentialism and absurdism? Which is a question she asked me last week and this mm -hmm. is embarrassing because I'm like, what was it again? Okay, but we didn't fully define it last week. And we had ginger kombuchas. Oh, that was so good. I love that. <laughs> I, I like, I've been... Those are good, right? Really missing those. Okay, let me work through this. Okay, for everybody paying attention, <laughs> who's still here. Everyone's Some, still here. Because sometimes people are just like cooking pasta and it's like on in the background. Well, that's still nice too. Which is, that's it's like, like a radio show. That's why I started to do this. I was like, you know what? Let me make that show where people who really want to drink wine can have a good conversation, feel like they're there. But, like, I'm not offended if it's in the background. Yeah. Like, also, how will you know? Huh? How will you know? I won't know, and also, like, I just enjoy talking with my friends, like, with yeah. red wine. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, existentialism is the thought that our existence, there's no purpose whatsoever to being here, you're like, that's not correct. Okay, wait, let me finish, let me finish. I'm not... I didn't say anything. Okay, existentialism is the study of our existence, and I believe it's the thought that we don't have any true purpose of being here on Earth in the universe. Humans are just kind of like here by chance, and so since there's no real point of us being just randos in the middle of the universe on a rotating block, we need to find our own purpose in life, our own meaning to make this even worth living. Yeah. Is that right? That's really good. Um, I would Gordon say... Gordon Marino! Marino! Oh, my <laughs> job. <laughs> okay, so you said that um, there is no purpose in life, and I would say, again, this is all, I feel like there are so many different ways of interpreting these things, but I would say that there is no, there is no meaning. Like, what do you think? <laughs> Hello? So I think that existentialism means that there is no meaning in life, but that we can create our own purpose. And that's there's a constant strive for everybody to find this meaning. Meaning, um, and yeah. So what I, is I the would meaning say, for you? Well, I would say that that will go that will lead into the second category, which is absurdism. 
And and what would, was that would, again? Yeah. What, okay, so existentialism. Well, that's the next question for you. Shit, you got it. Okay, let me think. Absurdism. Okay, so existentialism. Maybe there's no point. I don't know, but we have to figure out what the purpose. You have to find your own purpose in life yeah. for it to be worth living. So absurdism, I think, is kind of existentialism. But even finding meaning in your life is like so absurd that there's still no purpose to find it even meaning because it doesn't even mean anything. Yeah. So basically, finding meaning in absurdism is kind of like a contradiction to the inherent meaninglessness of the universe because it's which is kind of like damn i kind of fuck with that ideology right? yeah. but isn't that nihilism okay whatever all these isms are but yeah yeah well i would just say that um there's a i would say that absurdism is like what comes from existentialism so it's like existentialism birthed i see absurdism because yeah you have to ask the question okay even if i find meaning in this life to make it worth living like maybe i'm gonna travel maybe i'm gonna have a family like make it so i'm still enjoying my life mm -hmm. but here are the three the choices you get okay so this is what Camus says this is what he offers to his readers mm -hmm. which is first um if you're confronted with the absurdist reality of life you can either one commit suicide please don't don't this is but what, like this is what he says this is what he says um, and he also says don't, so listen to Kami and us. Um, the second option is to make a leap of faith um, and project all your responsibility onto a higher force, like maybe God or some type of spiritual. A savior. Yeah, a savior. And the third option is to live life not, not in spite of, but, but maybe because of this absurdism. Like, you know that there is no meaning in life, but that kind of gives you the freedom to do whatever the hell you want. I think that's me. Yeah, right? I'm kind of like, who knows if this is even meaning anything? Let's mm -hmm. have some fun while we're here. Exactly. And that's why I love absurdism. It's basically like, you, you know want to drink wine? Go drink wine. If you want to make a whole series about drinking wine with your friends? Make it. Okay. What were some of your other classes when in philosophy? In At my first college? Or Where? Oh, that's right. Because she ended up going to... The reason she was in Paris was because you were studying at the American University of Paris. You know, and um, well, basically what happened was I was in Minnesota and Gordon Marino, um, he helped me out by mm -hmm. just like talking me through um, my feelings of doubt and just like loneliness because I was literally in the middle of nowhere. And I made some really great friends, but most of us actually ended up leaving after yeah. our first year there. Um, because we, we all like, were used to a bigger city, at least like slightly bigger. Most of my professors, most of my friends there, or I guess just acquaintances, acquaintances there, um, but especially my family, to stay there and to just stick it out and be at the top of my class and just graduate with, with honors and all those things. And then I can go and do whatever I want. I was like, I don't want to stay in a place for four years and be miserable. That's just, that sounds like absolute hell. So I was like, again, anywhere but here. And I was, um, while I was in Minnesota, I would be watching a lot of YouTube videos, especially of like New York, because I wanted to try something completely new. And I wanted to maybe try going to Europe, but I still wanted to go to an American college to make the transfer process easier. So I was like, okay, why not France? I've never lived in France. Looked up YouTube, on YouTube, I looked up Paris videos. Found Damon and Joe. Me? Mm -hmm. Oh shit, and Joe? They were the you got you guys' videos were the first. Oh my god, we made it look so fun. Yeah, you <laughs> did. I was like, first video, I was like, okay, I gotta go there. You're a philosophy major. Mm -hmm. Now I think with most people. Writing writing. With creative writing. <laughs> I feel like most people on the channel will be like, oh, that's pretty cool, because mm -hmm. I talk about philosophy where I can, but. Your average person on the street, will their first question will be, what are you gonna do with that? That's one of those degrees that you can't get a job with. Yeah. What did Gordon Ramsay, Gordon Ramsay, <laughs> wait, Gordon Marino. <laughs> Gordon Marino, what would Gordon Marino do <clears throat> if he were asked by some rando on the street, hey, what can you do with a philosophy degree? That's one of those liberal arts degrees that you can't get any job with. What mm -hmm. would he say? Okay, so he would say, first of all, he loves books so much, so he would always be leaning towards something in that route. Cool. Like being a maybe a teacher or a professor or a writer, whatever. I want to just 
make my art and and get have a job on the side that will be able to finance that, that mm -hmm. passion of mine. And and it's like, okay, so I want to make art. My sister wants to be in business and we both study philosophy. So it's like literally when you study philosophy, you are what you do is talk and listen and argue and and think. And you're learn able to, to think. Exactly. You're able to think mm -hmm. critically yeah. deeper. I swear my whole comprehension of philosophy, my way of even thinking has gone so much deeper in the past two years now yeah. that I've studied psychology and philosophy and really understood why people behave the way they do and also like the bigger picture of things. A philosophy degree, I'm like coming to your like rescue right now, or <laughs> not even rescue, I'm coming to your like support. I'm on your team. Mm -hmm. Like I almost feel like a philosophy degree could get you any job because yeah. you're willing to, you're asking the questions that no one else has even thought of maybe. I mean, that's that's really difficult, but it's always there. There's always that option and or the opportunity for asking new questions. Yeah, I would say, I feel, again, I don't even know who Gordon Marino is, but I feel like Gordon Marino would probably be like, uh, if somebody asked Gordon Marino, what job can you get with that degree? Gordon Marino, or me, if I were a philosophy teacher, I would say, why is that your first question? Why oh, is yeah. a job your first question? Like, maybe think about that. Why That's true. Why is that your first question to ask oh, me? I should have said that. That's really good. Yeah. Come on, I've been studying I'm it for proud. two years <laughs> on my own. You know, it's kind of like, why yeah. is that the, why is working, literally just working, mm -hmm. the main question we have on earth? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I just said that what I want to do is have a job that will be able to finance what I really want to do, yep. right? And that's necessary. Like, you can't get around that fact. Like, everybody needs... Like, you money is... Yeah, you have to survive. Um, but literally, at the end of the day, what are, you, what are you gonna do? Just only make money? You don't actually need that much. Like, what I want to do is work at a coffee shop. That would be... I worked at a coffee shop, it was so much fun. It's so much fun. I had one in, in Berlin last year. It's just like such a great way to meet people. <laughs> it was that's, so much where, fun. that's where I met my boyfriend. Oh, for real? Yeah. Here's some philosophy for you. I don't know if it's philosophy, but it's just a different way of thinking. Like, that stuff falling from the sky right now, there, it literally cannot be bad. Like, intrinsically, water falling from the sky cannot be bad. It's just maybe what it could do to your electronics or whatever. So Pollution. for you to just be like, I hate rain, it doesn't really, why would you hate rain? Rain is natural. Yeah, you get a free shower. A free you shower a free is beautiful. Shower. And then I always feel like no matter when, no matter what's happening in your life, if it starts raining on your face, you just kind of start feeling alive. You just, it's like a rebirth, mm -hmm. literally a rebirth. And this also, is what philosophy does to you. I mm -hmm. feel like you start looking at things like that and you, something that you would have just taken for granted, and you start being like, oh shit, even the rain, there's like a lesson to learn here, like yeah. uh, something beautiful to look at. Yeah, and also um, in the last month, I've been especially stressed with school, you know, and um, I've been listening to so much music, just like there's a constant like playlist playing in my in my ears that, I, that it has turned out to like make me not even appreciate the music anymore. It's just background noise. Mm -hmm. So two days ago, my AirPods broke. And it was kind of like a moment, like a sign almost, to reappreciate little things. Like today I went out and got some soil. For your thought, plants? Yeah, for my plants. And I, I didn't take my headphones. Love it. And it was, it was just so nice to hear a bird chirping. You know? <laughs> I know, and like little things. This li it's literally the little things. I That's like that you say that. Yeah. Um, I like you say that because when I go to a country, when I'm making my travel videos, yeah. I. I actually make it a point to not take my headphones because it's important to hear like what people are saying on the street. Yeah. What's the music playing in that car that's passing you? What uh, do the birds sound like? What do those birds sound I'm like? Literally since coming from Germany and I'm spending a year, over a year, in a tiny little town where I've gotten so used to all the birds and reacquainted with the birds, being here and like hearing a red cardinal or a blue jay or like an American pigeon, that's like, it's so special. Like learning yeah. the sounds of the birds, relearning them, it's so nice. Yeah, again, I think that's what you learn when you study philosophy, to take everything into account and you realize it's not always about what job can I get, am I making enough money, you start yeah. being like, but I don't need money because I can hear that rain right now. Yeah, and again, like, 
money is always gonna be, you know. Come on, like this place is beautiful. You need some money to like afford this. Like. Okay. Yes. You need some money. There's to another story there, but um, <laughs> anyway, like money is always gonna be a question to answer. Like you always need some, but at the end, at the end of the day, you really don't need much. Like, yeah. do you really need to buy AirPods? Don't buy AirPods. Listen to the birds. God, I love AirPods though. And for some reason, I had written down FOMO. Fear of missing out. This is what oh, I wrote down. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess like maybe, I don't know if I said this last week, but maybe I like felt a fear of missing out of like bigger cities. And that's where I like started watching YouTube videos. You know, like I felt like I was a part of it somehow on like some tiny little level. Like, at least I was watching these videos. Is that what was it that or was it that you were watching these videos that you felt FOMO? Like, oh, you were I did not feel like I was missing out. No. On like... Okay. Like, well, that's good. Well, yeah. I was saying, I don't know, I wrote this down. Again, I put notes for every Red Wine Talk, and this is what I wrote. FOMO, the center of the universe is wherever you are at. Like, your universe, that's happening for you, yeah. me, you, it's wherever you're at. Yeah. So... I guess that's maybe when we were talking about, like, drugs last week. Yeah, I was right? going to ask like you if you want to talk about that. Sure. Okay, cool. Well, I put, you thinking about where other people are means that you're living, your center of universe you're operating from a place of other people's realities instead of your own reality. So I feel like I need to slow that down because that would like that's like a really like, woo. Ooh, yeah. Like so often we feel FOMO. I do too sometimes. If I'm staying home on Friday night and I look on my Instagram story and I see everyone else having fun without me, yeah. I ask myself as well. If I go to Target there? on Friday night, I'm like, what's going on in New York City? You know, like, I really am thinking that. Yeah. For sure. Exactly. And so you, but you always got to check yourself. I'm trying to give us all the like, oh yeah, but let me think, let me put this into consideration. Like, you're seeing everybody else having fun and you got to remember, oh yeah, this is my reality right here. Why am I trying to live my reality through their lens? Like, maybe they are at the club having fun. Yeah. I'm not there though. I'm living through my reality, which is right now at Target. Mm -hmm. This is my reality. And I think that's why like nowadays we hear so much about depression and anxiety because we're able to like live from other people's realities yeah. on social media. You see everybody yeah. else having fun and you're not having fun. That's true. Whereas and back when they no one else, you yeah. couldn't see what other people were doing. Exactly. So you were happier. And also this has been like so sad for me. Like I really didn't want to be this type of person. But like Instagram, I had to delete delete for like three weeks yeah. because I it just got to got to a point where it was toxic for me because I just like kept comparing myself to all these beautiful women, and it's like now I'm back on Instagram and now I'm seeing these women. I'm like, go girl, you go girl. Like I'm I'm just in awe of them. But before that, it's like when you're constantly like confronted with that and how oh yeah that girl is like beautiful. And she's short, but I'm like tall and, and lanky. Like that's not that's not the beauty standard maybe that's like normal now. What does this word normal even mean? But anyway, it's like a constant struggle of comparing yourself to other people. Yeah. And it's just so unhealthy because nobody is living your life. And nobody is seeing what you're seeing. And I I remember after that like depressive episode in Minnesota, like it kind of extended towards Paris. I feel like a lot of my friends um, share this experience of coming to Paris and feeling really lonely. But once I came through that, I like looked at myself in the mirror. I was like brushing my teeth, and I caught my I caught a glimpse of my eyes, and I was like, "That's me." I was like, "I'm back," and I listened <laughs> to like, um, fuck, there's like an AC/DC song. It's like "Back in Black." Yeah. Isn't that Amy Winehouse? Whatever. Mm. Okay, so it was like a... It was like a... It's just like... I'm really back in black and I'm back in black. Isn't it that? That was beautiful. That was... Gorgeous. Like, I start a solo career. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is like red... That's... Red I think it's ACDC. No, it's like... You sounded so beautiful, but like ACDC is more like... It's like... I'm back in black. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... My TNT. dad. You just don't know my... <laughs> Like in the garage listening to <laughs> But yeah, it's like you're for me it was the mm -hmm. moment of like seeing myself in the mirror and being like, Oh my god, I like caught myself again. That's me. But also that moment happens all the time. It's like you're 
sitting in the subway or the metro and you're you like look around and you see all these people and you're like everyone all these people have eyes okay all these people have eyes and they're all seeing what they're seeing and i'm the only one who's seeing what i'm seeing and it's kind of like it makes you realize also what Camus says which is like that the fact that you're alive is kind of a miracle you know and that's also one of the reasons why he doesn't want you to commit suicide because you are you are a miracle yeah it's literally you you me, we gordon gordon marino we are all miracles that's actually kind of cool like no matter what you do in your life if you stay in your living room and watch netflix your entire life or if you're out traveling the world what you see from your two eyes is so unique. No one else yeah. will ever see that experience, and that's pretty fucking cool. Ever. And you, 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 can, you <laughs> and you, ever. And you yeah. <laughs> We're talking about living life through your own reality, and not living your life through other people's reality, which would then create FOMO and jealousy. And it's like, also not possible. You're like you're not going to Literally ever do possible. that. Yeah. Like drop it. Yeah. Like shut up. Yeah. You're not gonna let that happen. And that's also like again tying it all the way back to absurdism it's like it gives you the freedom to literally do what you want to do because for me again like it was hard the past month being like you know stuck on my computer writing my thesis um and like going on instagram to just like see what other people are doing i would compare myself to all these other girls and i'd be like i would end up feeling so sad about how i'm looking like oh i'm too tall oh i'm like my hair is not long enough or whatever like my arms are lanky who cares whatever it is and um but that's the thing like nobody is you no matter how similar you look to i don't know kylie jenner like you're not kylie jenner and that's beautiful mm -hmm. you know i have two things again and we'll see if i remember them both the first thing <laughs> <laughs> i feel like i'm not a chart over here number one um, this, I'm, the philosophy class that I'm taking online, they said that... I didn't know it was online. Yeah, it's online. Oh my god. Yeah. I wish it were in person. I'm such an in-person person. I thought it was like, just you. Well, like, it's just me. Yourself. It's a class where like, there's a database of videos and I just listen to them on the subway. Oh, yeah. with the four, like, downtown four Damon's five, six. French course. That's, wow, I didn't have to say it. <laughs> <laughs> and in this yeah. class, they said the only time that you'll actually feel anxiety, whether it's about other people, about yourself, your self-image, whatever, is if you're projecting yourself into the future or into the past. Yeah. That's the only time you'll feel anxiety. So if you're anxious about something, it's probably because you're not actually present right now. Yeah. Because right now, it's probably, everything's probably good. You're probably at home, like, cooking your pasta, like I said. Or you're probably right here enjoying your glass of wine. Literally nothing else exists. Yeah. Literally. So if you're anxious right now, always come back to that point. Number two. <laughs> we, we listening? Made it. We made it. And I remember what I'm gonna say. You said Kylie Jenner, and we all think that like we are not the epitome of beauty, but in some sense we are the epitome of boot <clears throat> and booty. <laughs> booty and booty beauty of somebody else. So it's almost like we all have these hundred characteristics, and then there are maybe ten that we're like, damn, I wish I had those ten over there. Yeah. But you would never give up the ninety percent of what make you you yeah like you would never give up the 90 percent of you who lived in germany who grew up in manhattan who mm -hmm. lived in minnesota so that you could have those 10 that's like kylie yeah. jenner like what yeah yeah, yeah. And like, kylie i would jenner love would... i would absolutely love to have big boobs it's not a reality for me and that's okay i have friends but... who have big boobs and they're like god like it... jumping rope and running like it's so difficult i know it's like back pain like back pain i know but like i still <laughs> I don't have boobs but... <laughs> <laughs> this boobs boobs <laughs> that's gonna be whole category yeah. target birds boobs, boobs. <laughs> yeah you would never give up everything that yes. you stand for to get like one percent of what somebody else has exactly i love that and it's also like at the end when you at the end of the day, I mean, um, you make connections with people. Like, sure, you might be attracted to some people, friends, partners, whatever, based on how they look at first. And like, you, you kind of feel um, connected to some people, maybe dressing the same way as you do. But at the end, like, you are 
attracted to the person within, mm, you know? That's interesting. Yeah, like you're not, like sure, everyone, I think everyone is beautiful. Honestly, yeah. like everyone has beautiful, like- Something you want. People, beautiful, people have beautiful eyes, for example. Everybody has beautiful eyes, any color, gorgeous. But like, what makes a person a person is who they are, not how they look. And it's like so that. annoying, like you always have to, we're our own worst critic, is that what that phrase is? Enemy critic, I think it's something like our that. Our own worst enemy? Yeah, 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 something like that. <laughs> but like, we really are, but then we have to like, constantly be reminding ourselves that that's really just, not secondary, it's like 10th, it's like 50th, it doesn't even, it shouldn't matter that much, but obviously it still makes sense because we're, especially in the digital age, like we're always confronted with it. But I think that reminding yourself of like, yeah, what makes me me is not my exterior, or at least it shouldn't. Or, I mean, it, it can, like, as well. If it's you're, also if you're a part model, of you. Or like, you know, I don't know. Actually, let's scratch that. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know what I'm saying? You know, at the, at the end of the day, what makes you you is who you are and not how you look. You know, I like what you said. It's like, you're going to meet somebody. I just met you. We'll yeah. probably be friends for 10, 20, 30 years. At the end of, Only. Uh, who knows? I don't know. Who knows? Whatever. What will happen? I look back on the past 10 years and okay, there are people that I met 10 years ago and you vibe, maybe it's because they're a parent and you want to be with them in a yeah. relationship or because you have personalities that are compatible and humor that's compatible and then you stick together for 10 years appearance is not like the thing that lasts you know like our appearances both you and me will change yeah um both you and i sorry again this is my like english degree <laughs> those were subjects of the sentence modifying the verb change <laughs> you and i we don't have the memory at all times but when we do it's there Oh. Like I told y'all this was gonna get crazy. Well, okay. you said this. Can I you... said specifically those words. We don't have the memory. You were saying it's interesting how we all have memories in our head right now, mm -hmm. but you never remember them until you do. Yeah, okay. So this is like what? I, okay, I honestly I think that's true and it's like it's quite difficult because it, it makes you question your own sanity every time. Because for Freud, a memory is the last time you remembered a specific memory. So it's like you're adding on to the memory each time in a way, you know? It's so, almost like that game Telephone where you're like telling it a different, yeah. a different way, but it's like, oh, wait, how, how did it actually happen? That's amazing. You should bring that up in your next class. In my actual yeah. wine talk? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this but is no, why I love philosopher. But that's really good. Like, it's, that's... Telephone is how we can think of memory. It's because I have, I remember I took this psychology class two years ago, or maybe last year actually, and um, I was talking about and writing about memory. And I have this memory of the first plush toy I ever had, like a, mm -hmm. what is that called? Plush. Plush. Soft plush toy. Like a, you know. Be be uh, beanie baby? Oh my god, no. I never had those. Oh my god, that was my thing. Wait, aren't those like really ugly and scary? Well, Again, I had the Princess Diana version, which was limited. Beauty is about inner beauty, guys. I had the limited Princess Diana version of Beanie, Beanie <laughs> Babies. It was a purple Beanie Baby, and I treasured that thing. Wait, why was it purple? Uh, I guess like the British royalty. I've always been into like uh, yeah. Britain. Freud's conception of a memory, I think, is the one that I would agree with most. A memory is the last time you thought of that memory. So it's like, again, as I was saying about the plush toy, like I have this memory of a plush toy that's yellow and I got it from my great grandmother. Um, or actually, never mind. My, just my grandmother. My Danish one. I'm so sorry. Why, why did you look like that? But anyway, it was a yellow <laughs> bunny. But I was in Germany, again, as I said, for a year and a few months because of COVID. And I found the plush toy. Oh, really? And it was a dog. Okay? So it wasn't like, a bunny. It wasn't a bunny. But your memory was that it was a bunny. Mm -hmm. And it's like not a bunny, yeah. it's a dog. Yeah, so it's like your memory, I feel like it's, it's always changing. And each time you think of a memory, that exact moment of thinking about it changes that specific memory. 
So like, it's really difficult to to even think because you're yeah, all. It's so like, difficult to even think yeah, what's happening. It's what's difficult real. to be, but it really is, and that's absurdism. Well, everybody, the sun is going down. I have one last topic that we need to talk about. And it is, uh, again, last week in the park, we were talking about, um, again, philosophy, I think, goes hand in hand with maybe some substances, psychedelics. Um, I've already mentioned in that video, actually, about uh, thrifting and my what's in my suitcase, yeah. that I actually started investing in psychedelics. In fact, two days ago, I just put more money in. Oh my God. Again? Um, more. Jesus. Like, oh, I'm going to go bankrupt one day. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you already paid for more last week. And more. It's moving quickly. More. I guess. Well, I just, again, I really do believe in this uh -huh. because I've had my experiences. I think that they can do more good than harm, yeah. depending on who you are. I think if, maybe if you. Depending on FOMO. Depending on FOMO, depending yeah. on your level of like your self image, what you, how you view the universe. Yeah. Where you are in your life, I think that they could do you good. Yeah. Because they've only done me good. I've done many different substances. And that's okay. And that's it's definitely great, okay. actually. And I can tell you that some of them I'm like, I don't know why people do this. Yeah. And the other ones I'm like, I see exactly why people do this and more people should do this more often. Yeah. So um, on, my, on my 21st birthday, I did some, I won't say what it is, but anyway, like, I am never gonna do that again. Interesting. Because it's like it didn't do anything for me. It was like me it like moved on. I moved on like five minutes after, but it was on my birthday. It was nice to do the process with my best friend. To figure it out. Sonia, shout for out. <laughs> Love you, girl. <laughs> you decided for yourself what that experience was gonna be like instead mm -hmm. of thinking like, okay, the government decided that this is a bad thing. Yeah. And I shouldn't also do this. Also, society itself, like. Exactly and. Mm -hmm. I like that you decided for yourself what you're going to think about this thing. Yeah. I'm all for that. I only started when I was 27 because again, I felt like I was very straight edge. I was very, career is the way to life. Yeah. Make money, be successful, get rich. Not even get rich, that was never my motivation. It was just more like but just like, be successful. More than enough. Oh, this word successful, I hate this word. Well, that was my thing. Why do you hate it? I hate this word because it's so much about like how others perceive you. And it's not about Definitely. how you view yourself and how you feel and like not even how you view yourself but especially how you feel inside am i doing the thing that makes me happy am i doing something that makes me want to get up in the morning is it or is it something that like i will be doing in order for others to see me as successful Love it. i just think that like success is it's just one of the words that has lost its meaning like even Agreed. Even the concept of anxiety, I think, has been overused, and um, I feel like I'm gonna get some backlash for this. But which I don't think is fair. Like I don't think well, it's fair for people. To, like again, you're talking about anxiety. It's like you should be allowed to talk about anxiety yeah. however you want. Yeah, it's that's like, true. Yeah, that's what we were talking about last week. There should be no. There should be no rules. There should be no rules. There's so many rules today. Yeah. And a lot of them are for the benefit of the greater good, but yeah. there, a lot of them also are like. Come on, I can talk about this. Yeah, exactly. Okay, wait, just to wrap this up, we're gonna, uh, I guess we were talking about drugs, to be honest. Oh yeah, true. Um, I guess we're on a drug right now, that's what we're like going. Wow, I, I like how you say that, because honestly, of all the things that I've ever tried in my life, I've always been like, this is no different than alcohol. I will be, of course, everything you do like has yeah. a different, length and a different feeling but like in and terms depth. of toxicity like yeah. it seems like this is the same thing yeah but from I feel what like, my experience has been i feel like wine though is a little bit i feel like it feels more smooth more smooth more yeah. mature and that's why i think that the best drug out there is shrooms <laughs> what? Get him, get him at your local Dwayne Reed. Or Target. Oh Target. God. Where did Dwayne Reed again? Um, again, that was like natural, first off. Okay. Well, but mushrooms are natural. It, and yes, they are. Themselves. Say, they it, loud. Say it loud. Mushrooms Say it loud. are natural. They are. 
are. Everything's natural. It's from the crown to plant. <laughs> are you kidding me? How could this be illegal? Yeah, yeah. All right, look, I've, yeah, I've done many things in the past two years. Before that, I was very focused on being successful, mm -hmm. like you said. Um, the word that we don't really enjoy anymore. Successful is one thing, but it depends on what your definition of successful is. If it's being money, 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 yeah. you successful start asking Successful in the yourself, eyes of others? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. like, don't you feel... Okay, that's true though. I would have to amend my definition or like... Um, dislike of the word itself i feel like your youtube channel for example like it has grown so much in the past like year even just one year it's grown so much and yeah. that's i guess the the only word that applies there is is success but it's not i feel like you're not striving to like be to reach a certain number you're not just anymore. you're just striving to like reach people and somehow um, the numbers follow because people connect with you. You know, it's not. Thank you. Oh my god, of course. <laughs> Love your no, but again, I, once you reach a certain number, like I again on the Damon Angel channel, it was a million two hundred, I think, sixty thousand. Yeah. Even when you reach that, you're like, okay, cool. Like I still feel the same way. Yeah. And it's dumb still, that some people will look you at you still differently. You go to bed with yourself. And it's so dumb. I feel like it's so dumb <laughs> yeah. that people will see, oh my God, Damon, I'm on Damon and Joe. And they'll be like, oh, I have such an interesting, or I have such a, I have an opinion about Damon now yeah. on that channel. Then you see the same Damon Dominique, the same one mm -hmm. on this other channel that has 375,000 right now as, I, yeah. as we're filming this. And you'll be like, oh, cool. He's successful as well, but like not as successful as that. And it's oh, like, what yeah. are you talking about? It's the same. But I feel like it's even, like... I'm the same person. Even though you have less subscribers right now than you did on Damon and Joe, I feel like you're more successful now. If, like, we're going to keep using this word. I feel like you're more su successful now because you're... I feel like you're constantly growing into yourself even more. Agreed. Yeah. So, and, I mean, doesn't but. that speak for itself? It does. You know what? To turn to turn this video out, to conclude the video, I think the only reason that I feel that way is because I have studied philosophy, um, and I've like, gone deeper. I've gone more like in inward. Yeah. I, there's been some like introspection that's been happening, and I think people on this channel who follow me can like see that as well. Um, I've seen that. I've figured that out for myself, yeah, and again, a lot of that was myself, a lot of that was philosophy, a lot of that was being at a rave at 4 a.m., taking a little MDMA, and um, being like, okay, wow, this is like, I don't need to worry about that because I'm over here in this lane. So, it's been everything in my life, I recommend everything, I don't recommend anything, like, <laughs> I'm just trying to keep this like PG, but also yeah. not, because yeah. I don't need this to be PG for everybody. Yeah. Um. I'm just happy with the choices that I've made in my life. How about yeah, that? Exactly. My friend Cassie, who was the first Red Wine Talk on this series, she said, I'm happy with all the choices I made. She didn't say that in the Red Wine Talk, but like she said that after yeah. on, on text. And I'm like, you know what? I like that. Yeah. I'm happy with all the choices that I made in my life, period, because that got me to where I am right now, exactly. and I'm happy right now. <clears throat> so we are done. Cheers. Cheers. We have a... Um, half a bottle more to drink. Thank you for being on this red wine talk. Thank you for having me. It's been an honor. I hope you enjoyed. I did. I have. That was fun. I am. It yeah. always is fun. I have such a good time doing this. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching this episode of Red Wine Talks. Again, I don't know how to sit in this chair. You, have you figured it out? Because no, I haven't. I haven't. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how to sit in this chair. Yeah, me too, actually. I have you sat in this one that, that much, actually. <laughs> have you heard of this thing? This is an actual thing. Can you guys comment below? Um, <laughs> oh my god, comment below. <laughs> there, there's like know. an Instagram uh, concept that like gay men don't know how to sit correctly in a chair. <laughs> <laughs> oh and god. so if you ever are like near a gay guy, he's yeah. always like sitting like this. <laughs> like or like around. he's sitting like this. He can't like actually sit in a chair. Yeah. <laughs> and that's me. Oh wait, we can both sit like that. Okay. I, I need to take a mental note, like, you don't sit really, in chairs again. You look really cozy like this. Yeah, with your legs up. I still, I feel like this is awkward, like, I feel like 
most episodes were on the floor. That's the thing. Oh, and we're just kind of like yeah. we're At just kind of like were on the floor, always. gremlins on the floor, you know, <laughs> with a bottle of wine. Oh my god, gremlins! Scariest movie. Scariest out there. movie. Interesting movie. Do they exist? That's the whole theme of this episode. I haven't thought about what that. exists? Years. What is real? Uh, like, please leave a comment below. Um, this was fun and very smooth. Yeah. Thank you. Really fun. Comment down below. What is your meaning in life? What have you found to be your purpose? I will say this though, as I dive more into philosophy, I do see how it could be like dangerous for some people because you start realizing, oh wait, what is the meaning of life? Mm -hmm. Like the deeper you dive into that question, you kind of start putting yourself into question. Tu te remets en question, like what, but that's, what am I doing here? Yeah. What is my purpose? Why am I doing this? But that's the whole, the whole process of absurdism and also of Kierkegaard's com conception of despair and anxiety. Despair. Like you're, despair, yeah. You're always like, you are willing to be yourself, but you're also willing to not be yourself. There's a, there's a, there are like several options of um, ways of living and um, yeah, it's a constant struggle and you have to constantly be renewing it. and. Yeah, but in the end, like you have to go through those points of struggling to end up where you are now. And you're never gonna end up like it's it's not the end. You're always gonna continue to do that, and mm. and it's kind of comforting as well to know that even in the darkest moment, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Booty boom boom boom. Um, this is why I wanted her on this this channel, this episode, because I've been diving into philosophy, but it's nice to hear from somebody who's actually studied it formally. Um, I love that. I think it's interesting, and I think the more that you put yourself into question, the more you question why you're doing things, why you want to do things, the more you realize why you're actually doing them, yeah. or maybe why you should be doing something else. So I think it's super important. Philosophy is a major that I think is super important. I, like, will endorse it at yeah. any Olaf College. Study philosophy, guys. Gordon Romino. Gordon Marino. Marino. We love you. We love him. Um, all the descriptions and all the bios and links and all that is in the description. You guys know this. Like, they've been... I'm acting like it's not the same people watching these videos. So it's <laughs> in the description box below. Please follow me. Please follow her. We will be here. Thank you for watching. And I have to go use this bathroom here. Okay? Me too. Okay. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. <laughs> That was great. <laughs> okay. okay. I do. I. This is not going well. Hold on. Wait, this is scary doing it. We both lived in Paris, by the way. We met in Paris. Wait. <laughs> Wait. This is. <laughs> it's ruined. No. It's ruined. We gotta get another one. Wait. It's like too deep. You would think I would know how to do this by now. Okay, but me too. We don't have an excuse. Oofing. You did it wrong. Oofing. Oh my god, that's it's gonna break the wine opener. Wait, maybe like twist it out a little bit more. Wait, you did it. You did it. Twist Something's it. off there. Wait, like that, and then take it out. People in the comments are like, "How many philosophy majors does it take to open one bottle?" <laughs> <laughs> I swear right now. Oh my god. <gasps> oh my god. Like, I'm gonna have to like. Das ist gut. Why is it the only thing I can think of to say in German? Oh, you have, you have